again. Welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to look at the cylinder bores on this block, how we will hone them ourselves here in the shop rather than sending it out to a machine shop. Save a little bit of money. Here we're looking at the cylinder bore from underneath. The crankshaft sits right through here. This is really typical if you pull apart an engine, what they'll look like inside. It's been cleaned up some, just uh, washing off the oil and sludge and everything, but this is what they will generally look like. So you can see that the cylinder bore is smooth and shiny for most of the travel, and it gets dull right around here, and you can see it has a dull ring at the top. This is the area that the piston rings travel in, and this is the area that's going to wear. So the first thing we have to do is we have to look at how much wear this has to know whether or not we're going to have to bore it out or if we can get away with just honing it and reusing the existing pistons and possibly even the rings. I would definitely reuse pistons if they looked fine. Rings, if you've got it this far apart, put new rings in. Spend a few bucks for that. So at the bottom, what we want to do is we want to take a look and see if there's a ridge. So the rings travel down to the bottom of the bore and stop. And they'll wear on the inside of this bore in this shiny area. So you feel just inside here with a fingernail and see if you can catch a fingernail on it anywhere. Check all of the cylinders. If you can catch your fingernail on it, it likely is going to need to be bored. But if you can't, and I can't on this one, this one's nice and smooth across there, then it's an excellent candidate for just being honed. Now on this one, you'll notice it's kind of shinier here, and then it gets really dull here. This is just some baked-on oil, some carbon from that. So when you're checking with your fingernail, make sure that you've got that cleaned up. You can take a little bit of Scotch-Brite or emery cloth and clean that up first to make sure that you're actually feeling the metal and not any kind of buildup. So if we've got a little bit here, we can take like a Scotch-Brite Take some Scotch-Brite up, clean it a little bit, and then check the bore with your fingernail. This one's in fantastic shape. Then we'll roll it over and check the top. So again, just like the bottom, you're going to see it comes up and it's a shiny surface here where the rings ride, and then right at the top where the, piston, where the rings stop and then travel back down, there will be an area that there's a ridge. I can feel the ridge here, but if I use my fingernail, I cannot catch that ridge. Again, you're going to want to check all the cylinders, because you might have one that has more wear than another. But this, uh, this block, all of the cylinders have very little wear. So this one's a great candidate to just be honed. I don't need to buy new pistons, don't need to get oversized rings. We can just hone this out, put it back together with the pieces that came out of it. So let's take a look at how we hone one of these out. If we're going to hone out the cylinders, we need a cylinder hone. This is a real common three arm. We've got stones here that actually do the honing. They've got different grits. This one is a, a medium or a, a actually pretty fine stone. Then the bore on this is in really good shape, so I can get away with just using this stone and this stone alone. I'm not a fan of the ball hone or a dingleberry hone that has a bunch of beads stones on it because this these stones will stay parallel in that bore as you move up and down. So we're going to go in, and as it moves up and down, these are going to stay parallel with the sides of the bore. It's less likely to wear it in like an hourglass shape or something like that. So we're going to get a much straighter side on the bore when we hone it out with one of these. So we need a hone. We also need a lightweight cutting oil. 
I'm just going to use WD-40. It's a nice, very lightweight oil. We'll put that in. That'll provide some lubrication while we hone. And we also need a drill, something to drive the hone. So to start with, make sure that the stones are clean. We don't have any large particles on those. I'm going to lubricate the faces of these. And then we just squeeze it together, slide it in, and then let go. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and I'll hook the drill up here in a minute, this can provide tension for how hard it pushes out. Doesn't need to be super hard. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and back out, in and out. As we move up and down, the stones are going to scuff in a circular pattern. The faster we move up and down, so if it's making lines around, if we go down and up, it makes a crosshatch between down and up. We want the angle between those crosshatches to be about 45 degrees, so we have to adjust our speed up in and out to get a 45 degree. You don't really need to worry about the angle until after you've broken all of the the shiny part up and effectively removed the, the glaze. So we're going to get it so that it's not shiny anymore. And then we'll worry about getting a 45 degree crosshatch. The oil in my other hand, so I can occasionally give it some oil. I'm actually going to give the bore a little bit of lube right now to start with. Then we start out. Now when we come when we come up, we want the stone to come out a little bit to make sure we've gotten all the way to the top. Do not come up past about here, because if you come up past the midway point, it's going to want to do that. So you want to come up so that the stones come out of the bore, but not much more than, say, a finger height. Same going down. Now, when you go down in, you have to be more careful and keep an eye on it, because if you go down too far, you might run into the saddles for the crankshaft. So you don't want to hit those and break the stone or break your home. So you're just going to go down in just enough so that it goes down below. So we start out home. Give it a little bit of lube. Now we'll take it out and we'll take a look at the bore here. Use a rag or something to get any of the lubricant and any of the cuttings off. We want to get it clean so we can inspect it. So let's take a look at the bore now that we've run the hone in it a little bit. You'll see that it's gotten nice and dull in here. So we've cut through that shiny part. The problem with that shiny part is if you put new rings in and you're against a shiny bore, the rings are never going to seat fully. They won't wear to the exact shape of the cylinder, and you're going to get oil blow-by between the ring and the cylinder wall. That's why we're honing it out. So you can see right here at the top, there's a, an area that the hone is, is missing, that witness area. That's where when the spark plug fires and it detonates and it pushes that piston down, the rings expand out at that point. And so what they've done is they wear into it just a little bit more. So we're going to try honing it a bit more and see how much of that we can get out. We want to try to get it as much out as we can. Sometimes it's really hard to get it completely out. We'll give it a try. You can see we only hit it for a few seconds there, so we'll go back in and, and hone it some more. Lubricate the bore and the stones again.
keep moving up and down. You don't want to stay in one spot because you don't want to wear it more in one. We're trying to give it a nice, even, parallel hone all the way down. I can see this transition here, but I can't feel it with my finger at all. So it's really, really close. And that's why you don't want to come too far out. See, that's looking really good. Let's take a closer look. And now you can see there is no witness mark at all here at the top of the cylinder bore. So we've got this honed completely out. We're going to give it one more pass with the stone to try to get a decent cross hatch, though it already looks pretty good. And then this cylinder will be done. All right, so this final pass with the stone, I've got it clean on the inside. I've cleaned my stones off. I'm just going to put it in. Now, depending on how fast your drill spins, is going to affect how fast you move up and down. You're going to go pretty uh, rapidly in and out to try to get that 45 degree angle, though. There we go. Now notice, again, I used a completely clean stone and no lubrication that time. This is a a pretty fine stone. You don't want to use a really coarse stone at this point. Now we'll take a look at that final bore. All right, and here's the, the finish on this bore. Let's get a little light here. It's difficult to see with the camera, but we've got a cross hatch pattern of sc effectively scuffs that go this way and scuffs that go this way. And the angle between the two, eh, it looks like it's maybe not 45, but it's about as good as we're going to get by hand. It's important that we have some cross hatch, though. That's really what's important. That's all there is to it. That cylinder is now ready for a piston and new rings to go into it. Something to keep an eye out for when you're honing is areas that don't feel like they want to uh, be finished. You can see in here, there's this circular feature here. I don't know what you want to call it. There's an area right here that the hone is just not taking out. If we take a look at it closer, you can see it a little bit better. This feature does not want to come out because it's actually a crack in the cylinder. So this cylinder block, as it sits, is a boat anchor. This could be sleeved because there's so little wear in any of the other cylinders. I think it would be a good candidate to sleeve it because we could go back to standard on all of them. We'd only have to do this one, and we could reuse all the other pistons. But it turns out getting this sleeved was about the same price as boring the, an entire block out. So since I have a couple of blocks, I decided I'd bore out the other one instead of sleeving this one. While it's not common to find things like that, it's not completely unexpected. Keep an eye out as you're going through it. Make sure everything looks really good. Otherwise, it's a real simple process. You can hone it yourself, put the pistons back in, put new rings in, save yourself some money, and get your engine back going. That's it. Thanks for watching.